Greetings. Today we are going to go with tutorial 2 and tutorial 2 we are going to boot up with the Raspberry Pi. So in this what we are going to do is during the first boot up we will get a configuration menu and we don't know what to do in that. So what is configuration menu and how do we do it? So let me show you what is configuration menu. So let me boot up into my SSH into my Raspberry Pi and show you something. I'm so sorry, I guess I changed my password. Yeah, got it. So, this is something Raspberry Pi. Uh, Raspberry Pi gives you a set of configuration menu in which what you do is you set the parameters as per your uh, hardware or rather as per your platform and here the first option is expand my file system so when we first made the partition using the sudo dd command what we did is we made two partitions that is a boot partition and the second one is the 3.2 GB default OS partition. In this partition like the uh, memory card size was 8 GB, 16 GB as per your choice but what we could do is we could use the boot partition and the 3.2 GB partition. Rest the whole partition was going waste. So during this uh, configuration we expand the file system such that the whole OS or the slash root partition is expanded so that you can ex uh, use utilize the full memory of the memory card so expand file systems works for that so it shows that the partition has been resized and it will be enlarged upon the next boot second thing is user password so now you have to change if you want to change the user password or you can or if you want to put the new password you can do it from here now it will prompt you for a new password you have to insert the password so I'm going to insert a new password from here now retype the new password okay now it says password changed now third option is boot to desktop scratch choose whatever boot in desktop environment so here what we are going to do is there are three environments first is the basic console console is something that you see when the uh, servers in the servers when they generally boot up they don't use uh, desktop environments and GUIs because it uh, mostly consumes the memory so that's the reason they have the console or text space uh, application to access it uh, also known as a uh, command prompt in windows and uh, CLR I guess in Linux now here you have to choose desktop login as user pi at graphical desktop so what we why do we want to do is when we boot up you want to see the boot up screen and load up the GUI since uh, as we mostly don't know how the internal commands and everything work we are most uh, what to say used to getting uh, in a graphical user interface so that's the reason we choose here and to go to the next screen uh, or the option below ok or cancel you press the tab key and hit enter fourth option is the internal internalization option which is the language and the regional setup so here you have three options change local time time zone and keyboard layout so in local what you do is uh, you change the what do you say language language sorry it's the area now here I have India but yeah, find it So my current one is ENGB UTF-8 UTF-8 Okay, let me select by pressing enter Now, uh, default local, okay 
so I press OK for this. Taking a while. Okay, so generating the local is complete. Then the time zone. So time zone is like uh, I live in India, so it's Kolkata or Mumbai. Here I have Indian Ocean, Pacific Ocean, Atlantic, Asia. America, uh, that's all. So I'm going with Asia. Here, again, yeah, found Kolkata. Okay, now third option is the keyboard layout. So, keyboard layout is generally there are different kinds of keyboard. For example, uh, if you are using US keyboard so it's more somewhat like Mac keyboards or rather the standard keyboards uh, okay they are asking for keyboard model okay frankly I'm using a laptop so I don't know which keyboard I'm I'm gonna go for H HP mini 110 notebook uh, keyboard layout so I'm going for UK okay now the default keyboard function of Alt Just do. Anyways, uh, enable camera. Camera is used uh, as you notice that there is a small slot for camera, which is specially uh, designed for Raspberry Pi. So if you want to do that, you have if you want to work with Raspberry Pi modules, you have to enable this option. Then the fourth is uh, add to Rastrack. Add, add to Rastrack means basically Raspberry Pi map. I have no idea what it is. Okay, so Rastrack is used by is used to track Raspberry Pis. If you have an internet connection, you can add yourself to this tool. So fun and any sort of official. Role. Okay, let's not do that. Okay, then the seventh option is overclocking. Overclocking is basically your uh, Pi has a CPU which is ARM7 based I guess So what you're supposed to do is it is assigned a frequency at which it can work like on a decent level now if you Take a very high level it the only disadvantage is it will get heated up with the advantage it gives is uh, your processes might work fast but since it gets heated up, there is a chance that you might fry your hardware. So I'm going for medium since I, I have used it and I think it's decent enough not too high to fry the hardware and not too low to lag my uh, Raspberry Pi. Okay. And then there is about Raspberry Pi. No, advanced options. So in advanced over scans, some over scan is used to configure some black bars present on the display. Okay, host name. Host name is something that you need while SSHing or doing something. So when you, as you have seen in the what do you say command prompt window, it is it comes as pi at Raspberry Pi. So the Raspberry Pi is the host part, and host part refers to the specific. Uh, computer or the hardware on which the OS is running now the Pi here is the user of the hardware so there can be multiple users but for a specific machine there is only one host 
so I'm going with Raspberry Pi as my default then uh, there is memory split memory split is the amount of memory you're given giving to your GPU so I'm going with default here then comes SSH so SSH is an important tool now you can see I'm not directly using my Raspberry Pi instead I booted from my laptop to the Raspberry Pi using SSH now what you are supposed to do is you have to enable the SSH here then uh, the advantages of SSH is uh, no matter where you are in the world if you know the IP address where your Raspberry Pi is connected to you can directly boot into that remotely using a command prompt uh, or CLI as it is command line interface yeah so you can boot it directly from there and you can command the Raspberry Pi through the commands so it's definitely a good option to be enabled and it helps a lot since uh, Raspberry Pi are mostly connected in network or if you're using at some remote location it is a very good option for that so device tree frankly I guess it's the file system I'm not sure about it then comes SPI kernel module I have no idea about what this is serial kernel audio audio is again um, there is audio output and force HDMI so I will go with the default one which is auto and comes the update so I recommend you you don't update it right now because you can do it directly through the CLI environment okay so I'm backing out now and about the Raspberry Pi configuration tool so there is nothing necessary now I'll finish with the configuration by pressing tap and tap twice it will go to select and then finish and I hit enter so it's asking me to reboot now yeah I'll say yes okay. uh, that's all that's all we have now uh, lost the connection so it's booting up so that's it for uh, the Raspberry Pi configuration now if you uh, note there is something to note that if you want to change the configurations again you just have to put the command sudo raspi hyphen config and hit enter so you will again boot boot up into the configuration menu so that's all for this tutorial see you next time